It is now 7 o'clock. We will be starting our regularly scheduled town council meeting December 12th. Johnny, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, good call. No, no, some more people come in that way. There he is. Oh, no, sorry. I don't know. I don't know. You you read a human rights proclamation? I don't know. I can't. Oh, okay. You want to read a human rights proclamation? And now we lost Kathy. <laughs> you know, we'll read it. Okay. Um, okay, we've got Ed. Now we're missing Kathy. Here she comes. Oh, here she comes. Okay. We found him. He came in the other door. Okay, we're moving on to presentations and recognitions. We will start off with the Human Rights Day proclamation. Um, is that, well, who, who reads that? We just have a video. Oh, I'm sorry, we have yep. a video. Go ahead. On behalf of Farmington Human Relations Commission, we are proud to declare December 10th International Human Rights Day. On December 10, 1948, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, marking the first World Human Rights Day. The Declaration includes 30 articles detailing the fundamental human rights that are universally protected. Each year, the United Nations chooses a theme for Human Rights Day. This year, 2023, we are celebrating 75 years of fighting for human rights. In celebration of Human Rights Day, we have set some community goals to provide education, events focused on human rights, advocacy, and awareness. In January, the Human Relations Commission will be goal setting and we will use the framework of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as our guide. agenda we're showing four other proclamations uh, we just had a uh, reception prior to this meeting where we read the four other proclamations we are not going to reread them all uh, they are printed uh, within your agenda packet I would just like to personally uh, thank uh, Rafina Johnny and Ed it's been a pleasure working with all three of you uh, the three of uh, those three as well as myself will be leaving this council so you have four new faces up here so be kind to them as the next two years pass. Uh, with that, um, Mike, would you like to get the DS for a moment? So 
Mr. Chair, you'll be happy to know this will be the last time I will interrupt one of your meetings, but I always appreciate your forbearance, and especially on this occasion. So after having listened to many of these over the years, now you get one for yourself, along with the departing uh, members of the council who join you. Appreciate so I, I just wanted to echo what was said at the ceremony uh, at 6 o'clock, that every single member of the council, the ones who are departing and the ones who are remaining, always work their hardest to, to do what is right and best for the town of Farmington. And as was pointed out, they don't always agree. It would, be, it would be a boring world if we always agreed on everything, but, but they always work hard and try to do what's best for the town once all the debate is over. So anyhow, without further ado, I'd like to offer these citations from the State of Connecticut General Assembly, uh, introduced by myself and uh, Representative Cooley, Senator Slap, and Senator Lopes. Be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to C.J. Thomas and to Ed Gianaros and to Rafina Bacchus Lee and to Johnny Carrier in recognition of your faithful and dedicated service to the town of Farmington as members and in C.J.'s case as chair of the Farmington Town Council. The residents, businesses, and institutions of Farmington and, and Unionville are the beneficiaries of your thoughtful stewardship. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. And it's dated today at the State Capitol in Hartford, and it's signed by Martin Looney, President of the State Senate, Matt Ritter, Speaker of the House, and Stephanie Thomas, Secretary of the State. Congratulations, one and all, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Mike. And if you can stay up there, um, why don't you give each, pres each proclamation, Rafina, you go up first, we'll just go up in order so everyone can get their photo ops. Oh, jeez, okay. Better. Nice. There you go. There you go. All right. If you don't mind. All right. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. So. I've lost count of how many proclamations uh, Mike has come forward with over the years, but uh, they are always appreciated by those receiving them, and now being one of those, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we are moving on to item D, public hearing. We have none today. Uh, new items, E. Yes, make a motion to add agenda item L15. Second. We have a motion to second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Uh, we are now moving on to public comment. Uh, we just ask, uh, first we will start with the people here in attendance, then we will go on to those online. If you can state your name and address. Uh, if you are a student, you can just state your name. You don't have to state your address. Uh, and please, in consideration of others, try and keep your comments to five minutes or less. So, do we have any public comment? My name is uh, Malvika Vidwans. I live at 1 Stratford Road in Farmington. I have been a resident since 2000. 
and this is my first time um, in the town, in this meeting, and first time in making a public comment. So I'll be to the point. I have watched the video of the last town council meeting many times. <clears throat> and I wanted to make a few points, not only regarding the soon-to-be ex-town council chair's behavior, but also to make comments to some of the content of his talk regarding the democratic campaign during the last municipal election. Regarding the mailer that he mentions that was mailed out by the Democratic Party, he read the verbiage of that mailer to all of us. There were no personal attacks. No names were mentioned. It was a policy stance. The mailer was in response to the group uh, called Moms for Liberty Rally that was held in our backyard in Avon. This is a group that is responsible for book banning, anti-LGBTQA stance, and interfering with school curriculums. Many Democrats were present in opposition to the speaker, and a statement was also issued by the Democratic Committee stating, standing against the policies of this group. Interestingly, no statement was issued by the Farmington Republicans, nor were any members present at the opposing rally. So this was not a personal attack. It was instead a stance against the policy that many in the National Republican Party support. If the Farmington Republicans wanted to counter this and state their position, they could have done so. They chose not to. Local politics affect national policies, and the vice versa is also true. So it is important for the parties to clarify their position. Lastly, the conduct of the chair was shocking, to say the least. It may be his right to comment on a campaign that has wrapped up, but to deny a response from another town council member to shoot down a co-committee member, a woman of color, not to mention his over-enthusiastic gaveling, reflects poorly on the outgoing chair. I hope going forward this kind of behavior does not continue and the new committee is more congenial and works well together for the betterment of Farmington. Thank you. Thank you. Other speakers? Any other public comment in person? My name is Dorothy Raviel. I uh, live at 25 Munson Road in Farmington. I'd like to thank the outgoing council members and congratulate those who will be beginning or continuing with their service to the town of Farmington. Your hours of sacrifice and work are most appreciated. I hope that as this new council finds its footing, there will be the opportunity for open dialogue and communication among all councillors. And I hope that there will not be a repeat performance of the tirade that we witnessed at the last council meeting. The bullying and tantrum-like behavior that was displayed was unbecoming and unprofessional. The silencing of another counselor and denying her the opportunity to respond to the accusations that were made was unethical and reflected poorly on the entire proceedings. It is my hope that in the future, there will be a greater sense of congeniality and professionalism in the runnings of the town council meetings and that purely politically motivated screeds will not waste the time of other counselors and the residents in attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Uh, Paul Cianti, One Chatsworth Place. This is also my first time giving a public comment. I've uh, been up there receiving it. Um, I want to start by thanking each of you for your time volunteering the last two years, uh, and some of you for much longer than that. Sometimes we get so caught up in what's happening and the heat of election cycles and what we're passing as in policy that uh, we forget that uh, everybody serving on the DS is a volunteer, uh, spending time away from their families and livelihoods uh, for the betterment of the town. Second, I want to comment uh, that this council has worked extremely well together over the last couple of years, as many other councils have in the past. Uh, you guys have accomplished a lot, uh, and you should be proud of that, all of you, all seven of you. Um, this is all during a time uh, we had COVID, we had uh, state governments um, completely divided, federal governments completely divided, and other towns divided. And we in Farmington have always seen our leaders work well together. This doesn't happen without great leadership, and that starts at the top. Uh, C.J. Thomas, 
Um, I had the benefit of serving with you several years ago on the town council. And quite quickly, I learned, um, you know, the kind of leader you are, building consensus whenever it's possible, standing firm when it's needed, articulating points well. Uh, no two people agree on anything. And if you disagree with CJ, I find there's very few people who can articulate a point and bring people together better. Um, when you agree with CJ, um, does a great job of art articulating and speaking to what you, what you want to see and what you want to hear. I was speaking to a friend um, a couple weeks ago, and you know, he agreed with me on a lot of these points. You know, we're really going to miss this kind of leadership. That's not to knock anything um, that Joe's going to bring. And I said, that's okay. It's, you know, these are mutually exclusive. Um, we can miss everything CJ brings while also be excited for everything Joe Capitaferro will bring to the table for the next two years. Um, everybody that knows Joe knows you've lived in town, you know, three generations, police officer. And I think what everybody has come to see is your, your deep understanding of town policy, um, you know, all the complexities with town government. And this really came clear uh, to everybody that I talked to uh, at your debate when you ran for chair. You calmly, coolly, and, and in a very collected manner, um, you know, demonstrated a deep knowledge of how everything works. Um, I think you'll do great in the next couple years, uh, and a big part of that is because you'll have Keith Vibbert still up there with you. Um, Keith, you know, you bring, I've said this privately, but I think it should be said publicly, you really um, add a lot of value to this town in Farmington, and I hope you stay involved for as long as, po as possible. Um, you show up on time, you're intelligent, work hard, and, and get the job done. Um, to the other outgoing members, uh, Johnny and Ed, um, I think a lot of people will miss you guys. Obviously, you're two different parties, uh, but um, we need, you know, good, capable people from both parties in this town. And while you're hopefully taking well-deserved breaks, I hope you, um, you know, find your way to stay involved as much as possible. Um, in closing, I want to close with a, a quote that I remember from a former town council chair uh, named Jerry Havilan. And he came to public comment and was standing right here during my first meeting back in uh, 2018. And um, I was sitting right where, you know, where you are now. And he looked at us like a laser beam. Uh, again, this was six years ago. And he said, you know, we in, in Farmington focus on public service. We leave the politics to big cities. Uh, but we in Farmington do good public service. Um, you know, there's 26,000 people in Farmington and Unionville. Um, very few get the privilege of serving up on, on this dais, and it's really important that we figure out a way to get back to working together uh, for the good of all the people in town. Um, some people may not feel like what happened during the election were, pub were personal attacks. I'm from the camp. I feel they were. I know there's a lot of people who do feel they were, and to get back to that, we're going to need leadership from everybody who serves on the council and who has served on the council to figure out a way to get past that and work together. So with that, um, thank you for your time and thank you all for your service. Thank you. Any other comments from the public here in attendance? Seeing none, do we have anyone with their hand up, Kat? I do not see any hands raised. Okay. With that, we will be closing the public comment section of our meeting and moving on to reading of the minutes. Joe. I make a motion to accept the regular town council meetings of November 14th, 2023. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? Yes. Sir Rafina, go ahead. Um, I actually just read the minutes before. I don't know if everybody can hear me. Um, I just read the minutes before we started the meeting, and I think there are some factual inaccuracies. Um, and I was wondering if you, well, first, I'd like to make an uh, amendment that we add a few things into the minutes. Okay. That's, go ahead. What do you have? Did you like to add? Okay. First of all, there weren't, um, I think it says, I'll just read it. Um, he stated that he is proud talking about you, CJ, about how the council works together to serve the people of Farmington and Univille. He expressed his disappointment about mailers that were sent and ensured the public that the flyers were not an accurate depiction of the intended party. Uh, there weren't mailers. It was one mailer. Okay, wait. Could I, could I interrupt you just for a second? Sure. Um, you understand the minutes are a record of what's done. The minutes are not supposed to be a transcription of what was said. Uh, we follow Robert's rules of order, so we don't have all the words in it. We have the video, as uh, one of the previous speakers mentioned, has been watched 
I think more times than any video of any of our council meetings in history. Uh, so we have that for the actual transcription. But what the minutes are for is to just indicate what was actually done in the meetings. Right. So then, for, therefore, it should be an accurate summary of what was what happened at the meeting. But not correct? what we said. Did we? There was no motion made there. You're you're talking about the comments by the chair. Uh, there is never a full transcription of the chair's comments. Right. But you did talk about a mailer that there it wasn't mailers. Is that not accurate? And in here it says that there are mailers. No. <laughs> Again, um, the the point of the minutes is not to uh, parse words and uh, say there were words missing from the minutes or not. It's the, uh, the general tone. It's the, what was done, the actions taken at the minutes. That's okay. It. So if we want to t talk about actions, nowhere in here does it talk about me asking to be heard and be, being denied the opportunity to be heard. Well, again, um, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, these meetings are governed by Robert's Rules of Order. I totally get it, CJ. Okay. But this is um, an accurate and summary. In Rob, no, in Robert's Rules of Order, uh, you need to be recognized by the chair in order to speak. You were not recognized by the chair in order to speak. So what you had to say was not of the record because you did not speak on the record. You were not recognized. CJ, just note my objection. I note your objection. And it should be put objection. into these minutes uh, that I objected to if, the <laughs> summary of this. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. Opposed? Nay. Okay. Uh, the motion passes four to three. <clears throat> uh, moving on from there, we have uh, reading of communications and written appeals. We actually have one uh, that arrived when the town manager was not present in the office. This is addressed to Kathleen A. Blonsky. Uh, Dear Kathy, I would like to officially recognize the outstanding work you have done over the past four years in the face of obstacles both large and small. The year 2020 began with your standard education of a new council chair, including managing expectations and setting realistic goals. What followed were a once-in-a-lifetime global pandemic, the largest referendum in town history, 200-year reigns, addressing issues of national social unrest, Zoom meetings, and many other unexpected occurrences. While all of this was going on, the normal operations of the town would continue as a normal manner as possible. Your response during all of this was level-headed excellence and nothing short of spectacular. You had to rewrite the book on operations for Farmington in a manner that kept disruption as far away from our residents as possible. Your experience, knowledge, and staff support allowed Farmington and Unionville not only to survive, but to thrive during a time of global disruption. Thank you for your leadership, guidance, and friendship. Sincerely, C.J. Thomas, Town Council Chair. Thank you, C.J. Uh, no other reading of written communications or written appeals. Uh, report of committees, 1928 building. Yes, we met today. We're starting to go over some interior designs, such as fabrics, tiles, things like that. We have several subcommittees set up as far as looking at um, getting professional partnerships to overlook the design phase of it, uh, the infrastructure part of it also. And the next meeting is uh, January 23rd, I believe? Yes. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Farmington High School Building Committee. Yes. Um, so the last meeting we approved our move management RFP. Uh, for the, uh, the moving of, of the items from the old high school to the new one this coming fall, which will be exciting. Um, as always, uh, you can find any information and details at fhsbuildingproject.org. And the next meeting is uh, December 20th, uh, 5 o'clock in FHS Library. And I always end with, we are on budget and on time. Very good. We like that part. Uh, Green Efforts Committee. All right, green efforts. Um, so there's been an anti-idling campaign going on. I've, I've mentioned that in previous times where signs have gone up. So it's just a reminder for parents uh, that are dropping kids off either earlier than the, the drop-off time or waiting for the kids to be picked up that uh, you don't leave your cars idling unnecessarily. Um, we did uh, finalize and get the dates for next year's cleanup day and hazardous waste collection. Uh, which will be Saturday, April 20th um, of, uh, of next April. 
Um, there is a pilot uh, composting program at Westwoods that'll be starting somewhere around February 1st, um, plus or minus a day or two when the items arrive. Um, and our next meeting is on February 6th of next year. Great, thank you. Land Acquisition Committee. Nothing new to report. Racial Equality Task Force. We are hoping to get the group back in uh, talking in January. Um, Nancy Perrin is currently working on getting a date set up so we can start our meetings again. Great, thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to uh, reports of Town Council Chair and Liaison, starting with the Town Council Chair. Uh, start off with a few things that we've had going on recently. Uh, just this past weekend at the Unionville Gazebo, we had a neighborhood uh, caroling, which was very well attended. Uh, some of the students uh, led us in the carols. Uh, there were some hot chocolate and cookies. Uh, so very nice day. Uh, in uh, Farmington, on the Farmington Green, the Village Green, if you know, which is right across from the Country Club, uh, at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. They will also be singing carols up there. That's a tradition they've had for many years. So you're welcome to attend. Uh, tomorrow evening, in that same spot on the Village Green, uh, at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll be lighting the menorah. We've been doing that uh, for many years. The past few years, it's been moved to Canton uh, due to COVID, uh, but that will be coming back to the Village Green. So uh, for all those interested, we'd love you to attend. Uh, we also had a veterans recognition last Monday. Uh, this was a great event. It was two separate events recognizing the Korean War era vets and the Vietnam War era vets, uh, two groups that have uh, been lacking in recognition uh, from uh, our country and our community. Uh, it was uh, done very well. We had the um, Lieutenant Governor there, a representative from the veterans, uh, Department of Affairs in Connecticut. Uh, Mike D'Amico, who is here, was there also, and some other representatives uh, representing Farmington. Uh, and they, we heard some great stories. I shouldn't say great. We heard some uh, uh, very heartfelt stories from the veterans, from some of them from their time uh, serving. Some served here, some served overseas, uh, and some of them just from their experiences after their time there. Uh, there were, uh, I think, over 70 vets altogether in the two events. So uh, they all truly appreciate and express their appreciation for uh, Farmington and Unionville uh, coming back uh, to them and thanking them for their service and thanking for them for the time they put in. Uh, I would, I said it that day, but I would like to ask all of them to try and get more involved in our local vets. Uh, we have a void in our, some of our different local vet committees, the Veteran Memorial Committee. So any of those out there listening today, please, we'd love you to join and uh, come in and volunteer some time. Uh, also, uh, Nicole Vilbert received a, uh, Keith's wife, received uh, the 2024 Connecticut Association of Schools Elementary Principal of the Year Award. So we'd like to congratulate her and thank her for the time that she's put in there. So please share that with her. Uh, Brains the operation. There you go. <laughs> That's how it works in our house as well. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the outgoing Board of Education members uh, who worked very well with the council. We had great lines of communication, one of which is coming here, Sarah Healy. Um, we've got Christine Arnold, who is stepping away, and Liz Fitzsimmons, who has been chair these past two years who was uh, great in her collaborations with the town council. Uh, it made things like getting the second referendum for the high school building so much easier when we could work together and talk about where we needed to be. It also helped during budget season when we could discuss the realities of uh, what we could and could not do. Uh, so I thank her for her service and uh, wish her well on her time away. Uh, also, as my Final chair report, I would just like to uh, reiterate, reiterate my thanks to the community for all that you do on a regular basis. Uh, it is all the volunteers throughout town, whether you're volunteering, running for election, or just showing up for events um, like cleanup days and things like that, that make Farmington and Unionville uh, the town we all love and enjoy living in. So thank you all for that. Uh, I will also wish everyone a happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas. And with that, I will end the chair reports.
Uh, moving on to conservation and inland wetlands. Conservation and inland wetlands met last Wednesday on December 6th and discussed the construction of a deck at a home on Cedar Lane and two cease and desist letters sent to properties on 504 Main Street and 1509 Farmington Avenue, respectively, for conduct of regulated activity without a permit. Thank you. Uh, Board of Education. The Board of Ed met last Monday, December 4th. They congratulated the 2023 state champion girls volleyball team um, and their coaching staff. It was a really hard fought mm -hmm. endeavor and we're all very, very proud of the girls. Uh, they recognized and presented proclamations to Patty Boy Williams, Sarah Healy, Christine Arnold, and Liz Fitzsimmons for their service on the Board of Ed and to the Farmington community. Patty Boy Williams will be joining you here on town council in addition to Sarah Healy. Two students from the Farmington High School Muslim Student Association also gave public comment on the importance of the board recognizing Eid um, a public bid opening for transportation will be held on December 18th, and several new policy updates were approved on second reading. Uh, the board is also preparing for budget meetings, yay, budget meetings in February. Thank you. And my apologies, the four outgoing Board of Education members, Patty Boy Williams, who sat up here on my first year back here, so or my first two years back, so excuse me for the oversight please and congratulations to the girls volleyball team I assume they will be recognized here in the council with the next council coming in January uh, moving on to bicycle trails and advisory committee um, they're looking at crosswalks and are there some crosswalks that need to be painted throughout town on the trails uh, that's ongoing discussions uh, with the town staff and if can we achieve that uh, economic development uh, yes, the EDC met on December 6th. Uh, the commission is discussing and working through the Cultural District Advisory Committee, uh, which will be a subcommittee of the Econo Economic Development Commission. Uh, there will be three members from Farmington and three members from Unionville on the subcommittee. Uh, the EDC has gathered some names of people who are interested in serving um, on this committee and will continue to go through their selection process over the next couple of months and the next EDC meeting is scheduled for January 10th. Thank you. Farming the Historic District Commission. Okay, thank you. Uh, nothing new to report. I gave my report uh, at our last meeting. So our next meeting is going to be right here next Tuesday, the 19th at five o'clock in Chambers. Great. Housing Authority. Nothing to report. Human Relations Commission. Nothing new to report. Library Board. Nothing new to report. Library Board meets next Wednesday, the 20th. Town Planning and Zoning. Town planning and zoning uh, had one of the more interesting uh, chicken, duck, rabbit cases I've seen come before in my tenure as liaison, but I will spare everybody that. Um, the biggest thing to come out of TBZ yesterday was um, there was a ruling on accessory apartments, um, some, sometimes called in-law apartments uh, in town, which per ordinance right now in a residential area, those can be used for um, in-laws or family members or medical care, things like that. And now that's being opened up to uh, the general public. So if you have a dwelling like that, you can come to town and put in to uh, rent your uh, in-law apartment to the general public. Uh, TBZ next meets uh, January 8th and then January 22nd. I think the 8th is gonna be used for incoming TBZ members. So the next uh, meeting for the public is the 22nd. Great, thank you. Unionville Historic District Commission. Uh, yes, thanks, CJ. Um, the Unionville Historic District Commission met on December 7th. Uh, the commission has begun discussing plans for another historic district walking tour. Um, so this tour would likely take place in September or October of 2024 and would focus on the historic buildings on Main Street in Unionville. Uh, the next uh, uh, historic district commission meeting is scheduled for January 4th at 7 p.m. Thank you. UVIA. Uh, nothing new to report. WPCA. Nothing new to report. The meeting is tomorrow at 5.30. Okay, I don't believe we have any other liaison reports, uh, so we'll move to the report of the town manager. You um, have your written report. As you mentioned, CJ, tomorrow we're going to have the menorah lighting on the Village Green, and everyone is welcome for that. Um, we're also going to have a reception for the incoming town council members, and that will be on Tuesday, January 2nd at 6.30 p.m. in the town hall council chambers. Uh, the new town council members will be sworn in at that time. And lastly, we also are going to have a reception for um, CJ held Friday, January 9th at Farmington 
Botanical Gardens to honor outgoing member C.J. Uh, Thomas. More information will be made available in the near future. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to accept the town manager's report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Appointments. I'd like to make a motion for L3 to reappoint John DeMeo as a member of the Housing Authority for the balance of the five-year term beginning immediately and ending September 30th, 2028. Second. A motion a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L7. I make a motion that Jagash Shaw be appointed to the member of the Water Pollution Control Authority for a balance of a five-year term beginning immediately, ending September 30th, 2028. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L14. I make a motion that Sherry Greco be appointed to the 1920 Building Committee beginning immediately for an indefinite term. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L15. I make a motion that Carolyn Bernier be appointed to the Bicycle Advisory Committee beginning immediately for an indefinite term. Second. A motion and second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Okay, moving on to old business. I believe we have none. New business, N1. I make a motion to cancel the January 9th, 2024 regular town council meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Just, yeah. just one question. How come I know I'm not on the council, but I'm just curious about why we're moving it a week earlier. I just wanted to get everything rolling as far as coming up with the new council, getting everything up and going. Okay. Other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. And two. Schedule a regular town council meeting for January 16th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at town council chambers. You missed uh, that. No, oh, I'm two. sorry. To schedule a special town council meeting on January 2nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. at town council chambers. Second. I have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Make a motion to schedule the regular town council meeting on January 16th, 2024 at 7 p.m. regular town council chambers. Second. I have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? Aye. Uh, Aye. Question. Are three meetings per month going to become a regular part of your tenure as chair? or? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I want to be around you guys as much as possible. Wonderful. <laughs> no, this is for going into budget season. I'm just, I'm teasing. Else. I know. I got you. <laughs> Virginia, do you have a question? No. Okay. Uh, no other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. And four. I think I make a motion to set a public hearing on January 2nd at 7.05 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers to amend the Farmington Town Code Chapter 111 Historic Areas for the purpose of adding one historic property under the jurisdiction of the Farmington Historic District Commission. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, Gavin? Just the one property. We're going to have a public hearing on it, and the homeowners are in favor of it. Okay. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Five. Make a motion. Make a motion to award bid number three three eight, janitorial services for at various town buildings to SMG Corporate Services of Shelton, Connecticut, at the annual cost of one hundred ten thousand eight sixty seven point sixty. Second. I have a motion and a second, Kathy. You can see this is our janitorial services. We go out to bid quite often on this. Um, this is not the low bid, but we feel strongly that this is the most qualified group to clean our buildings. Okay. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Six. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the town manager to enter the town of Farmington into an agreement with Tower DB12 uh, Trust 2022-1, a Delaware limited liability company, for the purpose of assessment of certain municipal tax liens. It has to be determined by the town and Tower DB, and to authorize the town manager, tax clerks, Tax collector, town attorney to approve, execute all documents necessary to effectuate the assignment of any of all tax liens they deem appropriate. Second. 
Motion second, Kathy. So there's a little presentation in the packet, but just in summary, the tax uh, collector has been exploring the possibility of cer uh, selling certain tax liens resulting in f some long-term uh, tax delinquencies. The sales of the tax liens would be an alternative to either instituting costly foreclosure proceedings or conducting tax sales to attempt to collect the outstanding taxes. Under the concept of selling the liens, the town would be working with the tax lien buyer, would identify the liens that the buyer would be willing to purchase. Um, this is. Uh, this company has worked in 23 different states and has worked with six different municipalities. It's something that we haven't done in the past, but our tax collector is recommending that we look into this and uh, look into this company. Um, I think it's uh, it's very costly for the um, the foreclosures and the ways and staff intensive. And I think this is a, a good way to do it. Um, so uh, we're recommending that the council approve this. Questions or comments? I have a question. Sure. We have constables that uh, collect um, delinquencies. Will this affect their position and what they will ultimately, their assignments, I guess? Uh, no. Okay. Other yeah. questions or comments? Yeah, Ryan. I have a question. And I yeah. actually called earlier to see if you'd get some information about, you know, what would constitute a, the point where we would put them into, I'm not calling it collections, but sell the, the lien. Um, what, what would be the process in figuring that out and when that would, might happen? I think we have a, and Joe, you could correct me if I'm wrong, It's it's um, we do have an internal process for not just liens, but just for foreclosures and things like that. I think that they have to be three years in, in the rears of their taxes, and the dollar amount has to equal, I think, at least in the range of at least $30,000, and and that's where we start at. And so that would be the first group of people that we would look at. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. No, we have a, a process in place um, to do that. Mm -hmm. Is there a potential that this could... Are, are, are some of these liens that we may never see that money and by selling them, is this a way for us to get money that we may never see? I think that's part of the purpose, right, Joe? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't follow the question. By, by selling off some of these uh, liens that we hold and giving somebody else the right to the lien, is, that, is there a potential to make money that we may not otherwise be able to collect? Well, the idea is that I mean, we always have the right to collect it. What we're doing is we're selling the existing liens on the property. Yeah. So basically, what's happening is um, we're giving up the right to collect any of the back taxes, liens, and, and interest up to whenever the lien, up to the point that that lien was placed. So, for example, a lien was uh, placed in 2016, in 17, 18, 19, and we sell those liens. We can't collect that money from the taxpayer, but we're going to get it now from the company Correct, that yeah. we sell the lien to. However, going forward, if that property is still delinquent in their taxes, every May we place a lien on that property. And that property, uh, so any future liens, we still have the right to collect that money. Yeah. We still have first priority, even though you know, it's our tax lien, municipality always has first priority. So even though there's older taxes, older liens, our lien um, would still be first priority on, on the, um, for collection purposes. Thank you. Just one other follow-up question. So the company is doing this, and they get a percentage of what um, is owed? How does that work? They basically will buy the lien outright. So if the lien is for it, say there's multiple liens, and the total value is $40,000 in, in, in terms of taxes and interest and penalties, um, they buy it, they give us $40,000, and then it's up to them to collect the money from the, um, from the property owner. And they, you know, so they would go out to the property owner and, and use their collection process to collect that money. Um, hmm. I think of it, you know, I hate to say it this way, but think of it in terms, for them it's an investment more than anything, because what they're going to do is they have, they do have the lien, they do have the right to foreclose, but they also have the ability to work um, with the homeowner, or hopefully work with the homeowner. Hmm. Um, they're in it for the, the interest. Okay, interest on a, on a delinquent uh, tax is 18 percent so their goal is to get the homeowner it's like your credit card you know the credit card companies don't necessarily want you to pay off your balance every month they want you to pay interest because that's where they're going to make some of their money and that's where this is too they're not going to force the homeowner in most cases to um, pay it everything immediately they're going to work out a payment plan with them so that they can pay down that the, the principal balance but also pay the interest um, on that um, you know, municipalities don't have that luxury the longer something stays out there we need we run an operation based on tax revenue 
So we need to have taxes come in. If taxes don't come in, we can't <coughs> make operation. I understand that the idea is efficient uh, collection of what's due to the town, but um, how many of these properties, like, are, how much money are we talking about here? Do we have a significant number of properties that we've are in that? We've identified currently uh, approximately eight properties that we think are, are candidates uh, for tax loan sales. So we're probably talking in the neighborhood of uh, 100000 maybe $110,000 total from those eight properties. So uh, some of them are, are smaller properties with smaller, uh, you know, they're all, everybody's more than three years delinquent. Uh, some of the properties are substantial. There's a couple of, I think there's three $30,000 ones, and then there's some smaller ones that have been outstanding for a long period of time. So, uh, and the other thing to look at, we have to remember, is this is just an exploration of, of those properties. We're going to go to the company and say, these are the properties we think we would like to sell the tax liens on. They're going to look at it and say yes or no. You know, they may not be interested in some of those properties. So it's it's basically at this point, it's a, it's an exploratory process, and we would look at you know they would look at what we have to offer, and we would look at what they have to offer back to us in terms of the sale. Okay, thanks for the additional information. And, and the other thing is, this is all real property. This is not motor vehicle. It's not personal property. So this, that's why it doesn't impact the constables. The constables collect personal property taxes, delinquent taxes, and also motor vehicle taxes. They don't go after the real property taxes. Um, usually, they don't go after real property taxes. They're, they're primarily motor vehicles and personal property. Okay, thank you for the additional information. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion passed unanimously. Item seven. Make a motion to amend the appointments to the Farmington High School Building Committee. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kathy, Joe? Yes, you have the, I don't have the written part. Okay. So, to amend uh, the Farmington High School Building Committee as Sarah Healy for the town council member and Johnny Carrier as the resident. And the, okay. Yep. Uh, and there's Board of Education uh, open, and that will be after they convene for the new year, I assume. Right. Um, any questions or comments? Actually, uh, one question. Did those sure. all take place after the second, after everyone gets installed and everything? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was just curious. Yes. No. Yeah. Which she can't be council member <laughs> until she's council member, so yeah. good point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so these will be effective uh, with the new year. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Item 8. Make a motion to approve the following property tax refunds attached to the agenda. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Uh, standard list here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. We would next move on to item O, executive session, of which we have none. So I will leave you with a comment from L. Frank Baum of uh, Wizard of Oz fame. Everything comes to an end sometime. With that, move to adjourn. Yes. First, I'd like to thank everybody again for all their service to the town council, for your service to your community. It's been a pleasure working with you all. Make a motion to adjourn the regular town council meeting of December 12, 2023. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion on adjournment? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned at 746.